to come our side events to join us. The uh, title of the side events Current Situation and Future of Renewable Energy in Turkey. I'd like to introduce ourselves. My name is Murat Hardalac, Head of Department, Minister of Energy in Turkey. Participants Faruk Telemcioğlu, General Secretary, Turkey, Soran Energy Society. Mehmet Şimş Şişman, Vice President, Geothermal Power Plant Investors Association. Tuna Güven, Board Member, Turkish Wind Energy Association. Coşkun Kamberoğlu, Head of Engineering Analysis Department, Industrial Development, Bank of Turkey. And first of all, I'd like to give floor uh, Faruk Telemcioğlu. His topic is solar energy of Turkey. Floor is yours. Yes, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Faruk Telemcioğlu. I'm the General Secretary of Günder, Turkish Solar Society. I will give you information about Turkish solar market and Turkish solar industry and some opportunities to invest in the Turkish market. Who is the Günder? Günder is the civil society in Turkey, the biggest so civil society and built up 1992. And uh, we contains all value chain of the solar energy in Turkey. We represent some international platform to Turkey and also uh, we represent all the producers, not only solar thermal, also PV producers. Yes, this is our international relations, international connects. And also uh, we uh, we are made, we are uh, in a lot of projects, uh, solar energy projects. And also we have uh, conferences uh, next month. And uh, in this conference, we have a project market and also business to business meeting. This is Turkey electricity installed capacity. And uh, in this capacity, as you know, the renewable is very few, uh, but the government target is three gigawatt uh, end of the 2090 and uh, end of 2030, uh, the capacity, the, the target is uh, five gigawatt. This is all renewable capacities in Turkey, not only solar. And also uh, our main topic is solar. And uh, we are in a very good position about solar radiation. If you compare our capacity with the other European countries, you may see the big differences. And also uh, this is uh, solar energy radiation in Turkey. And solar have effects a lot of uh, point to climate change, a positive effect also. Uh, why is the solar is popular now? From 90 to nine and today, uh, the cost decrease uh, 75, more than 75. And uh, next, 30 years, we are expecting uh, the cost decrease uh, 60%. The solar thermal is not, uh, the solar is not only solar thermal or PV. Uh, we are interested in three different topics. And solar thermal is a, a very big industry in Turkey. A lot of people working in this area. Uh, a very big capacity now working on the roofs. 
and this is our uh, producers solar thermal producers and this is the PV market in Turkey 18 companies produce the PV panel and uh, this company's total capacity is 1500 megawatt and also we have uh, 100 EPC companies and now end of uh, middle of this month our installed capacity is 750 megawatt and we are expecting end of this year one gigawatt uh, we have a different uh, business model about the uh, solar sector the government expectation or target is uh, five gigawatt end of 2030 but uh, solar power uh, Europe is a, a different estimate and also our estimation is bigger than this is our PV panel producer companies in Turkey. The renewable tariff is very high in Turkey and also not only feeding tariff, also if you use local content, you may take it uh, extra money for five years. Uh, for different uh, business model in Turkey about the solar area, PV, solar electricity. Uh, this is license investment and license investment steps. This is unlicensed investment. And also, uh, you may see all the uh, solar uh, different models. Now, uh, 750 megawatt installed capacity, but the pipeline four gigawatts and also we have 600 license uh, now and also a new model the uh, renewable energy zones and the government announced renewable energy zone in Karapınar this area and the government give this area a company that want to produce to sell in Turkey this is investment area. And the company, if the company uh, want to produce to sell in Turkey, you must to take the uh, pure silicon in Turkey and must to produce to ingot, from the ingot to panel. And this is minimum efficiency about the production and also have a, a, another rules all these tests must be employed the Turkish people 80 percent and also uh, RD per person uh, must be Turkish people yes this is the Turkish market if you have any questions or uh, if you need any information I'm ready thank you Thank you, Jan. Yes. Thank you, Faruk Talemcioğlu. Do you have any question for? Yes, please. Microphone. O zaman şuradan hocam. Yeah, my name is Abdul Latif Bello from Islamic Development Bank. Um, we, you rightly mentioned in the graph that uh, the cost of producing uh, renewable energy has been coming down. I think you mentioned that it's 65%. Um, that is the global level. I mean, if we try to contextualize it within uh, Turkey, is the price down or, I mean, uh, is, is the price comparable with international price? Yes. Uh, the the international price increasing down, not only Turkey. The production cost, the, the production cost in decrease, uh, but uh, and also uh, the electricity cost with the solar decrease. As you know, I think 2.9 uh, US cent in Dubai. Right. It is it is very very low. 
uh, the coal is uh, approximately 6.5 cents. Now what I mean is if I have to buy solar panel or solar battery, is, will, will, is it preferable to come to Turkey or to go to China? No, no, we, we are uh, produce. Now we receive the uh, sales mm -hmm. from uh, China or another companies and now produce the panel like this. But the government said, have a tender, government have a tender, produce the cell in Turkey. And uh, th this is the technology. If we transfer the technology, yes, uh, we may compare the China production. There are no any problem. Because it is a very technologic production. OK, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Do you have any question? More question? I think everything is understood. He did good job. <laughs> yes, please. Um, you said target for yourself for solar. You said 3,000. And then in the next 2023, 20, you talk about 5,000 for solar. Uh, the question there is, what are the challenges that you foresee in case you are not able to achieve the target? Sorry, again, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm saying when I look at the table you showed, you said right now you are producing 3,000. And then you, your long-term vision or the medium-term vision is about 5,000. So the question here is, what are the challenges you are facing now that will create a problem for you to achieve your target of 5,000? And how are you addressing these challenges? This is, this is the government target. But this is not our target. The sector, the sector is growing very fast. Because this is an investment, and this is the money. The government said uh, 5,000 uh, end of the uh, 2030, but uh, our expectation uh, four or uh, three or four times, because a lot of people want to invest, and uh, a lot of people put to this panel on the roofs. It's a, a very good market, and it's a very fast market. It's a difference it's like this. No any other difference. Okay. Without talk more. May I uh, add uh, something for this question's explanation? Also, it depends on the technical situations, as you know. Okay. Thank you. Uh, second participant, Mehmet Shishman, Vice President, Geothermal Power Plant in Investors Association. His topic is a general overview of geothermal energy sector. Yes, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mehmet Şişman. I am president of Turkey Geothermal Investors Association. Uh, I will give you present information about geothermal electric power plants in Turkey uh, and our position in, uh, in the world. First of all, what is geothermal? Geothermal is uh, research that grows heat, hot water, steam and gases which include chemicals created by accumulated heat in the various depths of the earth. Geothermal energy is kind of energy that it is renewable, sustainable, non-consumable, cheap, reliable, eco-friendly, local, and green. In this picture, uh, you can see one of the eco-friendly geothermal power plant that installed between Olive Grove in my country. Geothermal energy power plants are one of the most important renewable energy resources that count as green energy status in the world. Eco-friendly geothermal power plants run uh, while not damaging to nature with closed cycle equipment. If we can, uh, if we can give an example about the uh, field uh, usage, 
Geothermal Energy Power Plant works uh, 8,500 hour per year and a power plant needs 2.53 decar per megawatt. Solar, solar energy power plant uh, works 1,800 hours per year and they need uh, 1620 decar per megawatt. Hydraulic power plant works 4,500 years uh, hours per year and they need uh, 812 decar per megawatt. Wind energy power plants are uh, work 2,000 hours per year and they need two or three decar per megawatt. In this gra graphic, you can see that required field compression according to research to supply total energy consumption in the world. And uh, geothermal is the second power plant that need less field. Analyzing to last five years developed in our sector, uh, when the installed power of geothermal power plants in 2007 were 38 megawatts. In 2012, 162 megawatts. In 2013, 310 megawatts. In 2014, 44 megawatts. In 2015, 660 megawatts. Uh, right now, our capacity is 860 megawatts. And in 216, it reached 860 megawatt installed power. Yearly average growth rate is 50% and installed power increase five times in a year. In that graphic, you can see the development of installed geothermal power according to number of power plants and uh, megawatt. In this graphic, you can see the position of Turkey in international energy sector according to operating capacity. United States are 300, 567 megawatts. Uh, Philippines has got 1,930 megawatts. Mexico, 1,069 megawatts. Turkey is now 60, uh, 860 megawatts. In that period, power plant investors did about 300 well drilling and they reached about 700,000 meter total drilling depth. It is provided to contribution to economy with 3 million, 200, 3 million, 200 million with that geothermal investments. In 2015, 3 million, 300 million kilowatt per hour electricity is producing with geothermal energy and yearly contribution to economy of Turkey was one billion dollar. 32 geothermal electric power plants have 806 megawatt total installed capacity. Under construction geothermal power plants in Turkey 117. Product, production license licensed power plants 138 megawatt, pure licensed power plants 250 megawatt, plant power plants 476 megawatts. With all of that power plants 933 megawatts, total potential is 1,793 megawatt. In this graphic, you can see the position of Turkey international geothermal energy sector with plant capacity additions. And then as you has got uh, uh, their uh, plan is up to 4,000 megawatts. United States, 1,272 megawatts. And Turkey, 1,153 megawatts. 18 power plants is taken into operation around the world in 2015 and total installed power is 313 megawatts. 10 power plants in 18 is taken into operating in Turkey and total power is 158 megawatts. In other words, the contribution of Turkey to geothermal in the world is 
50%. Installed geothermal power reached 30.3 gigawatt in the world. Projected 14.4 gigawatt is updated 18.3 gigawatt because of the investment speed in sector. In 2013, the projected power is 32 gigawatt. You can see the uh, analysis of the power plant's capacity. Geothermal energy in Turkey from 2016 October total installed power in Turkey is 77 megawatt, and 812 megawatt of them is from geothermal energy, and it is about 1.1 percent. Although the rate of total installed power is 1.1 percent, that rate can be increased to 1.85 percent depending on the geothermal energy capacity factor. Geothermal energy produ produced in Turkey supply yearly 1,200,000 houses electricity consumption. Also, electricity production from geothermal in Turkey decreased the import of 330,000 ton fuel. In this graphic, you can see the capacity distribution according to research in Turkey electricity market. The biggest one is natural gas. The second uh, is hydraulic power plants. And uh, geothermal is uh, nearly uh, one person. In this graphic, you can see electricity production according to the research in 2015. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Do you have any question? No question. Yes, third one, third participant, Tuna Güven, board member, Turkish Wind Energy Association. His topic is wind energy in Turkey. Follow with yours, please. Dear Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, welcome again and thanks for listening to us today. Uh, that's a great opportunity for us to talk you about the wind energy in Turkey. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Tuna Güven and I'm the board member of Turkish Wind Energy Association. Uh, first, me, today my challenge is to deliver you the uh, key statistics of wind energy uh, situation in Turkey and then the investment environment in Turkey. Uh, but before jumping to that, uh, that uh, I would like to give you some information about the Turkish Wind Energy Association. Yes, the Turkish Wind Energy Association has been built in 1992. Uh, it's a non-governmental organization, but half of the board members are the top bureaucrats and half of the board members come from the private sector itself, so that the position of the Turkish Wind Energy As Association is uh, joining both investors and the policy makers, so that this position of the Turkish Wind Energy Association uh, really add a speed to the investment environment in Turkey. Those are the examples of uh, our members. From starting turbine supplier to the investor, from a political body to the consultant, from students to uh, any citizen can be a member of Turkish Wind Energy Association so that 
variety of that members had a big opportunity and value about the wind energy policy of Turkey. As all we know that, from the environmental perspective, the renewable sources take much more importance in all the world from the energy generation. When we have a look at in the wind capacity of the uh, world from the global perspective, what we can see that it's around uh, 432,000 megawatts in all the world. In Europe, that installed capacity is 141,000 uh, megawatts right now. When we have a look into Turkey pro, uh, from the installed megawatt installed capacity perspective, what we are going to see is that it's around 5,200 megawatts. As end of this end of September, it has reached uh, 5,232 megawatts. From the year the perspective, Turkey is taking into operation approximately 800 megawatts wind uh, plants every year. If we compare it with, let's say, Germany, Germany's uh, average is 1,000 megawatts. So from that perspective, 800 megawatts uh, is a uh, reasonable value to invest in Turkey from the turbine supplier perspective, from the in, in, uh, investor perspective. As you can see here, Turkey is the 10th biggest uh, country among the world from the installed power and from the speed of investments. Let's have a look at the uh, wind plants and the capacity of uh, um, investment capacity, let's say, or econo uh, theoretical capacity. There are, uh, I have to revise my presentation, it is 5,000 megawatt right now, 5,200 megawatt in operation right now. And there is 1,900 megawatt is under construction right now, and th that's going to take into operation in coming uh, one and one and a half year. So there are 2,000 megawatts construction permits, and that permit is going to be uh, in construction phase. So from that perspective, the uh, approximately 10,000 megawatts right now licensed capacity in Turkey. So what we know from that perspective, that 10,000 megawatt is going to turn to operation in coming uh, three to four years. Also, government has been announced additional 4,300 uh, 4, 4, megawatts additional capacity is going to be installed in coming days. So from that perspective, what we see that there is going to be 14,000 megawatts uh, wind capacity in Turkey. So 5,000 of it in operation right now, and 9,000 is going to be into the investment phase in coming two to three years in Turkey. What we know is there is 2,000 more additional capacity, which can be easily announced, and it comes to 16,000 megawatts. So overall, we have a target, 20,000 megawatt, 2023 targets in Turkey, which is very impor important. Uh, from the theoretical perspective, what we know that the total technical economic potential is 48,000 megawatts in Turkey. So Turkey is the biggest onshore market in Europe right now. So from that perspective, 
what we see that in Turkey, yes, we have a long way to go, but there is very good and well-working investment environment in Turkey. The total installed power, as uh, Mehmet Bey said that, said that uh, 70, uh, 78 gigawatts installed power, 78,000 megawatts, and 6.7% of it wind in Turkey. And when we compare with the European uh, countries, the capacity factor of the wind plants in Turkey is at least 10% more. So we chose that the wind potential of Turkey is much more higher than Europe. So what we know that the, from the wind perspective, Turkey is the correct place to invest. As you can see that uh, graphic in Turkey, average capacity factor of a wind plant varies between 34 to 35 percent, whereas Germany is 22 percent. Also, don't forget that this calculation has been made uh, on the 80 meter hub height. When we say hub height, this is the uh, this is the altitude of a wind turbine. Also, the feed-in tariff mechanism is a very suitable to invest in Turkey. As you can see here, uh, there is a feed-in tariff mechanism which gives 7.3 dollar cents per kilowatt hour per produced kilowatt hour from the wind. And if you use in your investment the local content, when I am saying local content, it means that uh, the domestically produced blades, domestically produced um, towers, let's say. So it can easily increase to 13, 13.3 dollar cents per kilowatt hour, which is a huge um, uh, supporting mechanism, incentivizing mechanism. Uh, this is the breakdown of the uh, of the additional feed-in tariff, which comes on top of 7.3 dollar cents per kilowatt hour. For example, if you use Local blades, I mean the blades has been produced in Turkey, you get additional 0.8 dollar cents. If you use turbine tower, which has been produced in Turkey, you get additional 0.6 dollar per kilowatt hour on top of 7.3, which also gives a, a additional momentum to the investor in terms of, uh, in, ton, in terms of the revenue. So, as you can see that it can easily increase the uh, 11 dollar. Uh, what are the available local products in Turkey in terms of um, uh, uh, wind turbine? For example, we can produce wind turbine blades 100 percent in Turkey right now. Also towers. And we have right now factories in the opening phase, and they are going to produce generators in 2017. Also, nasal, all, all uh, gearbox, generator inside, all the nasal has gonna be, is going to be produced in Turkey in 2017. And there are some other incentive mechanisms in Turkey which directly uh, empowers the um, wind investments. So we have 85% discount in the treasury land lease fees for 10 years after commissioning. Also, we have 99% discount for licensing fee and a new license fee for first eight years for operation. Also, the National Grid Authority gives uh, priority to the wind project 
when you uh, when you join uh, when you integrate to the grid system. Also, the value added tax exemption for the domestic equipment for investment support certificate holders. This is also very important. Also, there are some other VAT exemptions. And as a last, I would like to show you the durations, time passed from the development phase to the operation phase of a typical wind plan in Turkey. You start with the project site research. It takes three months. And land uh, acquisition is three months. Land knowledge acquisition maps, we are talking. Permission of measurement station for METMAS, three months. And uh, for the measurement station, you spend three months. And it takes one year. Wind measurements is obligatory, 12 months. This is our second year. Wind measurement reports take three months, and preparations and license application to EMRA takes three months. Research and evaluation process, 18 to 18 months, 12 to 18 months, and you come to third year. Uh, tender process for the grid capacity take three months. Term of the pre-license at least take three months. It can also vary three to six months. Term of the pre-license, uh, in total, we, it take 45 years in total, starting from the uh, project site research. And all the other steps, construction permits and requirements, and also license and construction period takes one and a half year. In total, from uh, site research to the end of the construction period, it takes seven, seven to eight years, which is very reasonable amount. Also, we know that that timing is much more higher uh, in the European countries. So that in Turkey, there is a very well working system in terms of licensing, in terms of permits, in terms of the investment and, uh, perspective, in terms of the financing perspective. And also commissioning period, last period, takes three months. Thank you for listening to me. I'm ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much. Yes, last one is Joshkun Kamberoğlu, Head of Engineering Analysis Department, Industrial Development Bank of Turkey. His topic is financing of climate change, mitigation investments. Yes, full of zeros. Uh, thank you, uh, and thank you, IDB, uh, for uh, inviting Industrial Development Bank of Turkey. It's a pleasure for me to speak uh, this uh, panel. Uh, all the uh, panelists has talk about the uh, climate change mitigation investments, namely solar, uh, geothermal, and wind. And I'm going to talk about uh, now uh, the financing of these kind of investments. Uh, first, I would like to start uh, introducing myself, then uh, Industrial Development Bank of Turkey, and then I'm going to explain uh, the uh, actions and uh, things we have already done uh, for uh, renewable energy financing. Uh, before going to uh, introduction of TSKB, First, uh, I'm the head of engineering department, and uh, this department is responsible for technical appraisal of investment projects, including environmental and social uh, risk analysis and uh, preparation, monitoring, and reporting of these, all these issues to the uh, financing, uh, development financing institutions. 
uh, let me start with the uh, introduction of TSKB now. TSKB is the Turkey's first and only private development bank, uh, and we, uh, the, the, the generally the development banks belong to public, but it's a unique character of characteristic of Turkey. Uh, the industrial development bank is it's a private company, and the uh, fifty percent of share belongs to the one of the biggest commercial bank in Turkey, namely Ishbank. And the remaining uh, 8% belongs to a public bank, and the remaining is free float on the uh, Borsa Istanbul Stock Exchange. Uh, and uh, TSKB is a non-deposit taking institution, and uh, it funds the majority of its lending activity from uh, multilateral loans. But on the other hand, it's, uh, another interesting thing is that uh, 67 percent of its total long-term funding base is guaranteed by the Turkish Treasury, so that uh, we always report also uh, to the public uh, via uh, Treasury. Uh, and TSKB's main uh, fund suppliers are uh, IDB, IBRD, IFC, EIB, KFW, uh, CEB, AFD, EBRD. Uh, in TSKB, we have uh, independent project appraisal process consists of engineering analysis, financial analysis, and also economical research. Uh, and TSKB mostly focused on uh, climate change mitigation financing, including renewable energy, energy efficiency, and uh, resource efficiency. And also TSKB also financing environmental uh, protection uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, investments, municipal infrastructure investments, and also green building, and uh, especially uh, we name it sustainable tourism, which means uh, the building with the green uh, building certificates. Uh, these are the ratings. Uh, and when we look, uh, look at the ratings, one of the important rating is that uh, Saha's uh, uh, rating, it's a, uh, it's a uh, rating uh, which is uh, for the, for the uh, management of the issues. Uh, when we look at the uh, loan breakdown of the uh, Industrial Development Bank, the approximately 32% of its loan portfolio uh, is electricity. Uh, production and 8% uh, uh, is uh, to energy uh, distribution. Uh, for the financing, uh, we are uh, finance. Uh, we are uh, we are uh, apex. Uh, we are doing an apex banking. Uh, apex bank banking means uh, we uh, supply funds from uh, IBRD and EIB, and uh, uh, these funds are allocated to the. SMEs and uh, export-oriented companies via commercial banks and Islamic uh, financing institutions. Uh, uh, when we look at the, our outstanding portfolio, uh, uh, the biggest uh, funder uh, uh, fund uh, come from IBRD, then EIB, and then uh, follows the other uh, institution. When we look at the uh, list, uh, IDB is the fourth biggest uh, fund supplier to TSKB. Uh, already we have completed $200 million uh, loan from uh, IDB, and uh, these are directed, all directed to renewable energy and energy efficiency. Uh, after this point, I would like to talk a little bit about the sustainability uh, structure in TSKB. Uh, uh, in fact, in 1950, uh, TSKB has formed uh, together with uh, World Bank and Turkish Treasury, which means at the beginning it's a kind of mix of uh, public and private company. In time, uh, World Bank and Treasury has sold its shares uh, to the to other commercial banks. In time, some commercial banks sold their shares to Ish Bank. Uh, uh, with this culture, uh, even in 19. 80s, uh, TSKB was evaluating environmental and social impacts of all these investment projects. But beginning with 2005, uh, we have uh, structured uh, our uh, system and uh, we uh, formed environmental management system. And then 
Uh, following year, uh, we get ISO 14,000 certification, which is the first uh, bank in Turkey having uh, 14,000 certification. Uh, then, uh, in time, uh, we also started to calculate our carbon footprint, and uh, we systematic systemized it, and then we get uh, ISO 14,064 certification system, which is the first also in. Uh, 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 ISO 1464 certification. Then we improve our system and we uh, decided to uh, issue uh, our uh, sustainability report. And in 2009, we, uh, pre uh, we published our uh, sustainability report, which is also the first, uh, first sustainability report in financing sector. And we, uh, after, uh, in following years, we also issue, uh, published sustainability reports. Uh, the last one has been published uh, this year in, on June uh, with the GRI G4, uh, uh, G4 uh, reporting system. Uh, and also in 2012, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we created a, we changed our environmental management system to the sustainability management system. Uh, at which uh, we also put our uh, system uh, uh, social uh, things and also we, our top management are now in the system and uh, they are following and uh, also uh, covered all the issues uh, with us. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the uh, TSKB's portfolio. TSKB has started uh, financing renewable energy uh, approximately 12 years ago, but uh, we started very fast and we get uh, a lot of loan from uh, development financing institutions. And when we look at our renewable energy portfolio, uh, we already financed 167 projects. And out of uh, 167 projects, uh, 107 projects already uh, in operation. And the remaining is uh, already uh, is uh, ongoing. Uh, first, we started with hydropower plants. Then, uh, wind power plant uh, followed. Uh, we are also TSKB is the uh, first bank who uh, financed geothermal project in Turkey. The domestic uh, as a domestic bank. Uh, recently, we are very active on uh, solar power and also wind power projects. Uh, TSKB is also very active on energy efficiency. Uh, first loan for energy efficiency uh, was from World Bank and KFW, then EIB followed, uh, and the remaining uh, DFIs followed. But we started financing uh, renewable energy uh, in 2009. Till now, we financed uh, 73 projects, and uh, we uh, the total amount, uh, investment amount, was uh, approximately one uh, billion dollar. Out of this one billion dollar, approximately uh, TSKB financed 500 million dollars for energy efficiency. This energy efficiency is not a building type energy efficiency. It's they are totally industrial energy efficiency with a higher investment cost and a higher uh, financing. Uh, approximate, uh, approximately, uh, the uh, per project in, uh, financing is around six million dollars. These are the uh, industrial uh, sectoral distribution of our energy efficiency portfolio. Uh, the new thing for this, uh, TSKB is uh, resource efficiency investments. In fact, resource efficiency uh, uh, concept covers the energy efficiency, but we uh, divided energy, pure energy efficiency uh, and separated it. Separated. Uh, for resource efficiency, we get a loan uh, from various development financing institutions beginning with 2014. And we are very fast also in, in that field, uh, so that we already financed uh, 46 projects. And uh, for the 46 projects, uh, we have already financed, uh, let me give you the figure, uh, 122 million dollar uh, loan has been uh, distributed to the companies, and the investment cost was uh, around 500 million dollars. Uh, these are the uh, things which is not included 
in our climate finance, uh, uh, climate financing. But on the on the other hand, we are also uh, financing sustainable tourism investments. What we mean uh, sustainable tourism investments? Uh, if if the investment is a uh, greenfield investment, which is which means if you are uh, constructing a new building, then you have to get LEED or BREAM uh, green building certificate in order to be financed uh, by TSKB. Or uh, you may uh, renovate your building so that you have to prove your renovation uh, result in uh, efficiencies so that if it results in energy efficiency or resource efficiency, then it's eligible for financing uh, in the uh, heading of sustainable tourism. These are the development financing institutions which we are uh, currently uh, actively working uh, so that it distributed all over the world. Uh, last but not the least is that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, green bond issue. TSKB has issued uh, green bond on May 2016, which is the first green bond of Turkey, but not only uh, for the Turkey, it's also uh, cent uh, Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa region. It was the first uh, green bond uh, issuance. Uh, it's a success story because uh, uh, it gets huge amount of demand from investors, uh, which is a record high for Turkey and also for TSKB. Uh, 13 times more uh, uh, demand was uh, given our, uh, from our investors, so that uh, uh, so that the pricing has been uh, dropped uh, from the market price, which is very surprising because uh, normally, if you look at the uh, literature, you may see that green uh, green bond is. Uh, similar to normal euro bonds, so that investor, uh, uh, the issuers may not expect, should not expect any uh, uh, price uh, uh, decrease. But on the other hand, since the demand was very uh, so high that the uh, price has been uh, decreased uh, significantly, it was around 0.6% uh, of uh, decrease of price at the market level. So that with this, with this uh, success story, TSKB has awarded uh, by Euromoney as a uh, green SRI bond deal of the year. Uh, this completes my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, if you have any question, I'm glad to answer it. Yes, I think no question. Uh, thank you very much. Good night.